the coast in Nova Scotia uh, basically defines the province and that is in all areas of the province from the Bay of Fundy around to the Atlantic coast and in uh, Cape Breton. The thing I really love is the diversity so that you can be on the coast and then you can drive about an hour and a half and be on a coastline that has a completely different feel to it. So much about the coast I love, uh, well as a child uh, um, and I guess still as an adult uh, at low tide in the tidal pools and along the reefs and discovering things along there. Uh, in the morning seeing the fishing boats heading out, the lobster boats and that, that uh, always brings joy. The community, the coast is all about the community to me. That's number one, and if you can integrate the science and the and the communities and the livelihoods, then that's that's coastal living. What's not to love? It, it's what we are. It's our it's our whole thing. The coast, the water. It's 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 where we live. We we've been born there. We've been raised there. I mean, I've been many places in in the world. But home is home, and if you, <laughs> a little story when we come home and go across the marsh. I used to roll the windows down, kids are in the back seat, and I'd say, hey kids, smell the marsh, isn't that wonderful? It's in your blood, it's in your being. Literally surrounded by ocean and we know that there's going to be dramatic climate change going on. We know that sea levels are going to be rising so we don't know how much and I think that um, Nova Scotians, especially those living on the coast, are going to see the areas that they love dramatically change. It, uh, the last storm last fall was did a lot of damage. You know there's concerns there that you know one, one storm could, could take away your livelihood. The communities, the coastal communities, the people who live on the coast who uh, you know, who are, have a way of life that has been going on for, for a long time and who are losing control of, of how, to, uh, how to maintain that way of life. So My industry, uh, which is soft shell clams, which is huge to um, keeping the water clean because of filter feeders. So uh, with the, the erosion that's happening along the coast and people wanting to build along the coast, and that means the septics are being eroded and uh, which ends up polluting the soft shell clams. I mean, we love to send people out clam digging, but when you've got a red tide coming in, or otherwise there's a spillage because it's rained a lot and the sewer is spilled out into the basin, that's an activity they can't do. I also see filling in of wetlands along the coast for housing. Seeing the infill, like, they're supposed to be a city going to be here. Like, in a few years, all of this will be gone. Not just the island. Everything. My biggest concerns are just um, that we're not protecting it, that the habitats are disappearing, especially like uh, coastal wetlands. Um, there are very few left. My only worry is about industry coming in. Uh, well, if the big ships come through and it would ruin the delting industry. Because it would really be unfortunate if uh, you know, the islands of the South Shore of Nova Scotia turn into the islands of Maine, where you can't set foot on shore anywhere without being on somebody's property. Most of the land that we actually farm here and is mostly marshland, and that marshland is protected by a system of dikes and abattoirs. Yeah, right. We need to be concerned about the protecting of those dike lands and uh, those abattoirs to ensure that uh, that reserve of the potential to feed Nova Scotians. Uh, when they're built near the waterline too, uh, in an emergency situation, they become a real serious problem. To Humans aren't the only ones who inhabit the areas. Yeah, yeah. there's. There's wildlife and endangered species all yeah. over our coastal regions. These uh, shorebirds that are migrating through the, you know, and it's a vitally important area for those migrating shorebirds. So, uh, if we want uh, tourists to come and continue looking at those shorebirds, and we've got to protect them and make sure that they have a habitat that they can return to. Concerns to one coming in building a big house and driving taxes up along the shore, buying the land up. That's a concern because houses are worth too much and that drives all of our properties up too. I feel the erosion is pretty scary. 
how long are we going to have this, this little piece of land before it's eroded? The storms are much worse, too. Well, the big concern, of course, is erosion. You're, you know, you're losing, you're losing part of your property, not every year, but in, like last December, you have a big storm and some property is gone, so erosion is a big concern. I've seen a lot of uncontrolled development. Um, people who are uh, developing on, in areas that really shouldn't be built on. Thing. I've seen uh, seawalls that are doing damage to neighboring properties. It's like building on a floodplain and then wondering why it floods. So even though if you go to places now it looks pretty undeveloped, if you look at the property maps you see that's actually 85% of it's in private hands and it's all subdivided in these little hundred acre parcels and that's when we look at those property maps, that's what the future of our coast could look like, just death by a thousand cuts, all these little private pieces being sold and developed. There's a whole area for sale, lots for sale there. And they're basically at sea level. And municipalities issuing building permits, you've got to wonder, well, why would they do that? The issue is not stopping development. The issue is managing development in a way that preserves the character of the coast of Nova Scotia. Our government, you know, you're, they're our leaders, and this comes to me, this, they have to lead here. It's not going to happen by individual cottage owners trying to figure out what they're supposed to do. As a province, I think we need a strong sense of direction from government, and this is an area that we really need leadership in. It crosses all party lines and it really will be, it's an important area uh, for Nova Scotia to address. I think uh, we've got to have some provincial government leadership in this whole issue of protecting the coast and conserving the coast because we can't rely on individual municipalities around the bay to sort of uh, develop ad hoc and uh, um, you know, small scale guidelines and regulations for their area. Uh, the economics uh, of doing something about it or not doing something about it. You can't really have a coastal strategy if it carves out and doesn't deal with certain issues. So if it doesn't deal with aquaculture in the coastal zone, then that's not a coastal strategy because aquaculture is going to affect um, the coast. We should prepare for, for what comes and, and try and anticipate uh, a way to keep the shore as natural as it is now. We need to anticipate um, issues along the along the coast that are going to happen with um, the activities, mostly our activities, um, but also climate change and, and forecast what could happen and start preparing for that. Uh, if a lot of times if it's not a hurricane or a storm then it's put on the back burner. It's only when you get into that, uh, you know, that emergency situation that it comes to the forefront. There's no planning, that's the problem. You need some way of planning what people can do. You, things about building permits, um, especially when you've got those people who want to build cottages with the septic systems, I think that's, that's appalling to build a septic system on a beach that's obviously evanescent. The province would probably put in legislation that would sort of restrict how much development can go on the coast, and then after that, I guess, education. Having some regulation like they do along water courses where you're not allowed to clear cut and where uh, people that go in to develop should be required to slice up larger parcels of land. There's lots that could be done on a policy level to just stop the kinds of development that are happening where they shouldn't happen anyway. Um, so there's, there's a lot of work, I think, that needs to be done. We're pretty far behind other coastal areas in terms of what we... Um, just how we approach what we are allowed to do and not allowed to do with our coastline. That speaks to the importance of the province moving forward with provincial-wide um, uh, regulation and or legislation so that municipalities don't feel that they have to compete with each other and uh, perhaps look for the lower standard rather than the higher standard in order to attract uh, economic development. I grew up doing this, doing the delting, and I love it. I wouldn't work anywhere else. This is a dream. This is beautiful. I'm just totally amazed. Just, I love it.
I wouldn't be any other place, any other place at all. It's paradise. We're lucky to have it here. And we don't want to lose it. Because once it's gone, you're not going to get it back. We urge the government of Nova Scotia to listen to its people and act swiftly and decisively to make this a priority and put in place a strong, comprehensive coastal act that governs all coastal activities and clearly states what types of development can and what types should not take place on our precious coast. If you also want to see more protection for our coast, please contact your elected officials. Here's how you can act.